Hi again, everybody. Welcome back to the second installment on uh, sculpting miniature models, my basic first experience. Um, so I'm working off of a guide called How to Sculpt Fantasy Miniatures. Uh, I'm going to put the link below um, because this guy shows you everything that you need to do in terms of materials, and he's helped me get everything. Um, I've never spoken to him or anything, but it, it's a really thorough guide online. So the first step is to pick out what you're going to sculpt, right? So, I mean, are you going to sculpt like a, like a dragon or a dwarf or a knight? And like, all that stuff seemed too hard for me. And I'm not really into fantasy. I'm into like post-apocalyptia. Uh, I wanted to sculpt like tons of zombies because I always thought that they were so much fun to paint when I was painting models. Uh, and I think that it also is a little bit easier because you can be more cartoony uh, with your with your actual sculpt and it doesn't really matter if you're anatomically perfect i mean like you know you have it has to have arms and legs and stuff and knees but like uh, like if it's slouching that actually might be good even your mistakes might look good and like i said i'm a big fan of learning by actually doing so i think that this is going to be the most enjoyable way to go about learning to sculpt so now that i've picked zombies to sculpt, I'm going to actually sculpt uh, this one that I drew because that's apparently the first step. Uh, so I'll just show you a picture of it here. Uh, I know this isn't very clear, but let me see if I can adjust this lamp. Yeah, so that's what I drew. I just went on Google Images and I found a picture that looks good. Um, and it's like a businessman, I guess. And he's got like, uh, like crumpled up uh, khakis and his legs are all out of proportion he's like shambling he's kind of pigeon toed um and i think it'll be fun because i'll get to do the clothing too so that's something that i'm going to need to do in any kind of modern uh miniature um and it doesn't really have to look good because it's a zombie so uh i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna need uh a cork and uh crazy glue and i'm gonna need this copper wire and I'm going to now make the figure of the miniature by like tracing out like a stick figure, but in 3D with this copper wire. Um, I'm gonna have to clip it. Um, and then I can put it into the cork. I can glue it in there so that it'll stay. And then I can kind of uh, like cover that wire with Play-Doh I'm gonna start with. Uh, and then that will be my miniature. It won't be very good in terms of detail because Play-Doh is like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't let you sculpt as much detail I've heard. Um, I've honestly, I've never actually sculpted a miniature before. Uh, I got only this far in the process, so I'll get you updated when I actually sculpt it. Uh, and then hopefully we'll do one with better clay once I know what I'm doing. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, so I'm really my, realizing my first real challenge um, in terms of confronting how anatomy affects model creation. Uh, I am now cutting the wire. This is the piece of wire that I've cut. Uh, a standard size for miniature models is 28 millimeters, um, but I need to really measure that out and I'm, like think how the spine is going to look. Like how many, like if it's a, I don't know, say a six foot tall man, um, how many feet long is your spine? So I'm actually now engaging with like the logic uh, of how people figured out how to create miniatures in the first place, which is, like I said, a much more effective way to learn uh, because you have to figure it out for yourself. Um, so I'm just going to go take my ruler and cut this wire to size uh, to be proportioned to a human, and then we'll be right back. So I want to show you my progress so far. It's not much, but I cut out three pieces of wire, each about 30 millimeters, because I figure with twisting and turning, I'm going to need a little extra room. So uh, if you remember the picture by Da Vinci, um, I think it was Da Vinci, uh, um, an arm span or a wingspan is about the same as your height. So. I use that for my arms here, or these are little skinny noodle arms. Um, and then I cut these 30 millimeter pieces out and this is going to be terrible for legs. So I'm going to have to reposition it, but I've actually put together here, uh, I've twisted together the top and I've allowed the bottom, uh, to just be, uh, 
you know, freestanding wires uh, to be the legs because, you know, obviously there will be more to sculpt in around the top on the torso. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is this is going to be the neck up here. Um, and it's okay if this isn't perfectly solid right now because we're going to super glue it all together. So I'm going to twist this in. Um, I have no clue what I'm doing, too. <laughs> Uh, so this is all just my first attempt. Oh, shoot. And I'll be back when I finish that. So I realized that the last step wasn't even necessary because the key is to be able to place it into the cork and then cut it out of the cork when you're done, I suppose. So I really should have cut longer strands, um, maybe as long as 40 millimeters each so that it had like decent, uh, a decent root inside the cork. Because I was just imagining that you would just super glue it on. But it actually might be more stable to push it in. Um, we'll see. Okay, so uh, I was wrong before. You should have much longer wire than you need for that. Because you can always hack off a piece or two. One thing that came in handy is this Swiss Army knife. I used pliers. And actually the wire was thin enough to cut with a scissor. Because I realized that I don't have... Um, any clippers. So now it it looks okay. If this were a real human figure, I wouldn't be totally happy with the posture because it's kind of slouching. Uh, it looks a little Wild West right now, like it's about to draw or something. Uh, but, you know, that can be flushed out once I have more details. So I'm going to super glue a lot of this into place, and then we'll wait, and then uh, when we come back, I'll start to flush it out. All right. Okay, so next, now that I have my miniature, uh, and I've kind of altered its shoulders just a little bit because I figure if it's not really got much brain power, it's not going to be leaning in any one direction. I just wanted this to be like a neutrally posed miniature. Uh, so I'm going to add on clay first, just very gloppily. That's not a word. Uh, in the places where I think that the miniature is going to have the most bulk. So that's going to be like the the head, uh, the shoulders, the torso, uh, maybe a little bit on the quads. Um, yeah, and so once I get through with this, then I can add in the finer details. We want to think hatchet, then scalpel. It's okay to use fingers right now, I believe. Um, I didn't realize how hard this Super Sculpey is because I had been leaving it uh, with the intent to start sculpting a few months ago, uh, but I had a lot of work pile up. So now it's very hard and I kind of had to knead it back so that I could use it more. Uh, it feels like those gray erasers. Um, this is obviously too much, so... But, you know, it's a start. It looks like it's a body, maybe. <laughs> so, maybe a head like that big? Alright, I'll be back in a few minutes when I've done some more details. Update. Okay, so I got everything covered, but my miniature looks something like, uh... Like modern art combined with the guy from Spirited Away who eats all the food? And like a Charlie Chaplin hobo. So I think uh, I, I, I did the right thing. You know, I covered most of the model. But now I've got to like sculpt out the features. Uh, the other thing that I didn't realize is I've never worked with Super Sculpey. Uh, especially after I had it sitting for so long. And it's, it's gotten like a little bit flakier and harder. So this is not easy stuff to work with. Um... But I didn't want to use any of my Procreate yet because I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, so maybe next time. But uh, yeah, so this is a good start. And then I'll start to carve out the details uh, soon when I get back.